something to say. Hello everybody, how you doing? My name's Charlie, you might know me better as sci-fi fantasy writer C.E. Dorset. How, how you doing? Had one of those days? Had a better day today than I did yesterday. And it started with, quite honestly, witnessing a mini internet miracle. So, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about this because I want to get into discussing Iron Fist today. But when I got up today, I was pleased to see a lot of posts from Frank Oz saying that he is honestly sorry that he upset so many people with his phrase with his words yesterday clarifying them and saying that he didn't fully understand the importance of representation and that he didn't mean to hurt anyone and he was very sorry and I didn't find his apologies to be equivocating I found them to be quite honest and Kind of what I expected and talked about when I recorded yesterday's episode, but it, it was kind of a minor miracle in a way on the internet to see somebody actually learn, and I'm hoping that things don't go so far that it taints this moment, but it, it is the internet, and we'll see. I, I, I don't know. Anywho, let's talk about something that's not controversial at all. Marvel shows on Netflix. Oh, wait. Yeah these okay so i am a huge fan of daredevil i want to get that like out in the open i love daredevil with all my heart it's one of my favorite marvel sh I, I really really like daredevil my husband really likes luke cage i mean really likes luke cage um i it's i don't dislike luke cage and he doesn't dislike daredevil but those are our two favorites we both enjoy jessica jones and we were both wanting iron fist to be better and so, you know, I don't do star ratings or numerical ratings or any of that arbitrary crap because I don't feel that you can adequately boil a story down to a number. But I, I for m me, <laughs> this is all, the only person that I can talk to. For me, Daredevil, I'm sorry, Iron Fist season two was worth watching. And I, I want to talk about why. Did it get a lot better? Um, I, I think, okay, I think the biggest problem that Iron Fist has is that they cast Fist, Finn Jones to play the titular character of Danny Rand. That Finn Jones is the Iron Fist. And I say that because I feel like he was cast because he bears a passing similarity to the character from the comics. That if you kind of look, thumb through the comics and look at pictures of Finn Jones, you, you can kind of see Danny Rand in him. And the fact that he was coming off of a popular show, Game of Thrones, and wasn't a big name, so they didn't have to pay a lot for him. So they got the cachet of, hey, remember that Game of Thrones guy that you liked? We have him, and he's a martial artist now. Um, having said that, I, I think he was one of the weaker characters on Game of Thrones for a thousand reasons. One, um, the blatant homophobia of George R. R. Martin taints everything with that book. And I know that comes from those books and I know I'm going to get attacked for that, but you, you, he's writing fantasy fiction. So to say that homophobia on that scale is historically accurate means he felt it was justified for him to show homophobia on that scale without critique. And I have a problem with that. And I have a problem with the show for not truly critiquing the severe levels of homophobia that are allowed in Westeros. Because Westeros doesn't exist. You know, I often get critiqued because in the, fan in the fantasy worlds that I write in, homophobia isn't a thing. And yeah, that may be unrealistic to you because in our world homophobia exists. But I, I write partially as an escape route from my life you know i want to be somewhere different not necessarily better but different and I, I i deal with homophobia and transphobia in my real life i don't want to write it 
so, some gay people feel differently and they include it in their fiction and great for them great witch is a great villain in the nemesis series because of her blatant transphobia and turfness but that's not something that i wanted to do and so well i'm not saying that in every culture in my main setting homosexuality and tra- and trans people will be accepted you know i may someday think of a reason i want to tell a story where that's a factor and there are cultures that that could be written into because the stories have taken place primarily in sawyer so just because the cultures there are more accepting doesn't mean that everywhere in the world is so i mean i could always i'm not saying i'll never do that but honestly like if i i want to see homophobia i i go into town i, I read the internet i read a paper i watch those like i i don't need that in my fiction and so i i didn't mean to turn this into a prolonged rant about martin but i i think that that's a big part of what i had against him in watching in watching finn jones on both iron fist season one the defenders and iron fist two either directors do not know how to use him giving him the complete benefit of the doubt there or he is not a competent actor and there's part of me that wonders if it's more the first than the last on that in that he had a really bad idea about how to play the character because now i i'm not talking about spoilers on the series yet but towards the end of the season i think he actually improved there's kind of a stinger for the series that i didn't expect well i did i actually predicted it about three episodes in but <laughs> when Brandon and i were watching it but um i, I didn't think that they were actually going to do it i felt I, I felt at a certain point that they were going to go a different way and they didn't um but there was something qualitatively different about him it was just one scene it's a very short scene so i may be reading too much into that but i want to give finn jones the benefit of the doubt because i i don't want to pin everything on just how he's acted i think he's also written poorly and that's on purpose and i don't want to fault the writers there he's written poorly because he's a child he never had a chance to grow up and i don't even want to get into how like the comic book it is because that doesn't matter to me that we're not talking about adaptation here we're talking about the story itself they have turned kun lun into such a ferocious hellscape to live in through all three series that we've seen Iron Fist in, and every time he talks about his life in Kunlan, it must, it, it would have had to have been a living hell. And so, from a for a, for a child who had experienced an emotional trauma, to then, I mean, I don't fault the writing being stilted and weird with him because, well, he would have spent the majority of his life speaking a language other than English. He's just getting used to speaking English again because I'm not going to buy into the idea that they were speaking English in Kunlun. Um, though there's no explanation of him learning the language when he got there, but I'm not going to go into all that. Anyway, there are reasons that I think they wrote him with such a childlike nature and an immature nature and i think that plus how finn jones decided to inhabit the, that dialogue that's been a persistent problem with the series now um jessica Her- hernwick who plays colleen wing i love her character i love what they've done with her character and i want to say that for most of the characters that they brought in i think joy meacham is a very interesting character i think ward meacham is a very interesting character i think ward is a far more interesting character in season two and in many ways, season two is much more the story of Ward and Joy than it is the Iron Fist. Though, of course, the Iron Fist is involved. I, I think it's worth watching, especially if you're a writer. I think it's worth watching. Now, if, if you're curious, I'm going to get into spoilers in a minute and talk really about how, what I really thought about a lot of the various points about the show. But if you are a writer, this is... A very interesting decision on their part where I feel like Iron Fist season three, which will probably happen. I, I don't see Netflix doing anything to jeopardize its relationship with Marvel right now, especially with the Disney app 
upcoming. They're going to want to hold on to these licenses as long as possible and make sure that they're able to produce content for as long as possible using these Marvel licenses. Um, and Marvel usually puts in a use it or lose it, you know, line in there. So I feel like season three will be to season seasons one and two what Thor Ragnarok was to the Dark World. But for reasons that I understand, because we spend so much time with these characters, they felt it would be too jarring to have that change occur all of a sudden, like it did with Thor Ragnarok. Thor Ragnarok just has a different taste. It's a different flavor. It's a diff different everything from the Dark World. And we get some semblance of why, it kind of starts off feeling kind of like the dark where we where we left off in the dark world, but very quickly moves into its own thing. And it was a very smart way to reboot the series. I don't think that that would have worked for a television series. I've seen several ser series try that, and the only one that I can think of that pulled that off was Babylon Five between seasons one and two, and. That's because they had an actor leave the series and they had to bring a main one of the main actors into the series and brought another actor in to replace him. And I think that was a good thing. It allowed them to refresh everything and make this better. Now, having sa said that, I, I don't think that it would have worked as well for Iron Fist. I think they had an excuse to use it with the way the Defenders ended because the beginning of this series is very much a response to how def the Defenders ended. But... Mm, Okay, so from now on, there shall be spoilers. If you don't want any spoilers for Iron Fist, The Defenders, or any of the Marvel Netflix shows, I can't guarantee that I won't spoil something from Luke Cage or any of the others. Now, now is the time to kind of check out for a while. And yeah, okay, so I'm going to count down from five, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, spoilers from now on, you've been warned. So the basic plot of the story, it picks up where season one ended and kind of where the Defenders ended, where Danny Rand has made this promise to um, the Daredevil that he will protect the city in his absence. because he felt that he was going to die, but we know from the end of the Defenders that he didn't and the fact that there's going to be a Daredevil season three that he didn't, but he, he makes a promise to defend the city. And so he kind of goes out every day to defend the city and does the one thing they knows how to do, and that's punchline. Why? Because he's the Iron Fist and the Iron Fist punches. Um, we meet Ward, who is in recovery for his drug addiction. We see that he's actually gotten a little bit further along with that. He's cleaned up. He's trying to live a better life, be his true self. Joy has teamed up with Davos, like we saw from the previous incarnation, and they're planning something, and we're going to talk about that at length. Joy's character arc is not as compelling, I think, as some of the others. Ward, I think, has a very interesting character arc throughout the series. Davos? Oh, man. Don't even... Okay. We'll talk about Davos. You know, Mary Walker, on the other hand, who is one of the antagonists, she's definitely an impact character in the series. I think she's a wonderful breath of fresh air. I think she's of all of the things that make this series worth watching, make this season worth watching, definitely um, Sa Sasha Devarin's, um, I think that's like, um, her, I'm sorry, that, actually, that's the name of Davos. Um, oops, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Alice Eve, sorry, I have IMDb up and I'm quickly glanced, I got the wrong name. So Alice Eve, um, her portrayal of Alice Walker is compelling, it is powerful, it is a character that I hope we get to see more of, that they develop more. I, I really enjoyed her and her being on the show. Um, I liked a lot of the stuff that they did with Ward and Ward's character. I think he was much better acted. I think I know a lot of people that will probably be upset because I know from a lot of discussions that I had with people that he was a headcanon Ace Arrow character and you know asexual aromantic because of how he was portrayed in season one they throw all of that out the window in season two kind of um and i want to say kind of because i think there's actually a way that they could still make him acer arrow because the sex that he partakes in in the series is kind of a sublimation for the drugs that he's no longer taking it's it's a substitute for 
the narcotics. So in a, it, it's a very unhealthy sexual life that they actually show for him. And they don't actually show him to be romantic in any particular way. They, they really kind of play with that. And I think that it would be very interesting if this season was kind of him throwing everything against the wall to see if he could have a sexual or romantic relationship with someone. And in season three, we learned that he is ace and arrow. He is ace arrow. I, I think that that would be really well received, at least by me. I think that I think that even though they do give him a sexual partner in this series, and they do give him a quasi romantic subplot in this series, it is not a romantic story at all. He doesn't understand or have a connection to the things that he thinks he should be performing. And that, I think, is the key phrase there, that he is performing heterosexual romance badly, but the way he thinks it should be done. So I think I, I think it's still possible for them to have that moment with him, and I would love to see that. Um, I, I think that the problems that were spawned out of his sexual picadillos in this season were interesting and gave depth to his character and gave really they they seemed natural to me they seemed to come out of what was going on because a lot of us who have dealt with addiction when you give up one addiction you often sublimate with another unconscious one and that's a danger that you have to watch out for and that's kind of what he does so i don't know we'll we'll have to see where they go with this character but i do i by the, by the end of the season i really like what they've done with this character and i i can't wait to see more Misty Knight. Misty Knight appears in this season because, of course, she does. And she kind of appears in the season because we know from Luke Cage she's going to be, she's offered the position of um, chief of police and she's debating whether or not she wants to have the job. I think it's pretty clear by the end of this season that she's not going to take it. Um, she pretty much says as much. And in some ways, it almost felt like Misty was in the series as a way to get that plot out of the way before season three of um, Luke Cage comes around. And it's not a bad thing. I think that she probably would have handled that by going to Colleen. I think she and Colleen have a very interesting relationship with each other, and I think they're good for each other, and I want to see more of that. I think that it works out the way that they incorporated her. But in so many ways, she's just the police MacGuffin that gives some semblance of authority to the things that they're trying to. She, she's a justification engine and a source of exposition when exposition is necessary. But none of our characters have a right to know the knowledge, but the, the information. But she's a cop and has heard things on the grapevine kind of thing. Yeah. Davos. I, I really don't know what to say about the Davos storyline other than it was unnecessary. And I don't mean that in that, like, I wouldn't have told the story. I think that there's a very interesting story there. And I think by the end of the series, they got somewhere interesting with it. Except for the very end of the series, I think, corrupts some of that, maybe. But we'll talk about that in a minute. So the basic gist is that um, Davos and Joy have decided that they're going to get revenge on... Danny and Ward because he lied about my daddy being dead even though he was a very horrible monster and I don't know that but yay I'm gonna get revenge um and I have to say Davos's storyline I think is meant to be tragic but it's so over the top bad like his mother's a monster his father is practically non-existent in the story which is problematic because so much of his hatred for the Iron Fist comes from one thing that his father did. And so being able to have a sense of why his father did that would help us to understand what's going on in the story. But of course, we spend no time with his father. Okay. We spend way too much time with his mother, who is a monster. And they have one touching scene together when he leaves Kunlun to go find Danny. It's, it's touching. It's really well done. Most of Davos' scenes felt to me like they were leftovers from some 80s action flick and that he was the over-the-top hyperbolic fight 
monster bad guy. <laughs> I know I said that all weird, but I don't know a better way to say that. Like, there are so many moments in this movie that I just couldn't help but sing um, You're the Best Around and make that bad, like, martial arts montage scene joke when they happened because, yeah, it just felt like, and now is the time for another martial arts montage moment. So, yeah, let's do that. And it, it, it was what it was. And the main thing I want to talk about and why I think that this is worth watching is you, you're watching a series desperately trying to justify why it should exist. And in a weird way, doing something that I don't think a series should ever do, season two of Iron Fist is a direct response to criticism of season one and the Defenders. And it's a direct, like, Danny starts feeling the criticism that was lobbed on this series that he did not deserve to have the Iron Fist, that he is a bad hero, that he is a bad superhero and that he shouldn't be the Iron Fist. And most of the actual plot of the series revolves around that question. And at one point, and I'm not going to belabor a lot of the points here, but Davos succeeds in taking the Iron Fist away from Danny. And I knew right at that moment that this series was not going to disappoint me and was going to fall into the cliche of the power was within you all along. That it's a power that couldn't be taken away from him. He actually won it in Kunlun, but that they were able to take part of it or something of that nature. And sure enough, at the very end, the stinger that I talked about in the non-spoiler section is us seeing that he not only still has possession of the Iron Fist, but he's learned how to imbue the power of the Iron Fist into bullets, which is reminiscent of other Iron Fist characters that have existed in DC Comics. I'm sorry, in Marvel Comics. Um, yeah, that almost excited me to see Finn Jones as Iron Fist because I don't think he's a good martial artist. I don't think this is a, this isn't a Keanu Reeves moment where Keanu Reeves was an awkward choice to play Neo. And here's a weird side note. I don't know if you know this or not, but they actually wanted Will Smith and Will Smith said no. And they went to Keanu Reeves. Imagine what a different movie the Matrix trilogy would have been if that was Will Smith. Anyway, little side note for you to take with you. But the thing is, Keanu Reeves, I felt, was convincing in that he learned Kung Fu and was able to fight. And even so much so that he now headlines the John Wick series. And I don't question his badassery at all in that series. He's a fighter. He can shoot guns. Fine. I, I'm, he, he is convincing of that. I, I'm willing to take that. Not, not so much in the 47 Ronin, which was a bad movie. It was a bad movie. It shouldn't have been made. It was a bad movie. But John Wick and the Matrix, I was able to buy it. The problem I had with Finn Jones is Finn Jones never sold me at being a particularly good martial artist. And this is one of the weirdest things that I think that they did in this series. Because I'm not going to talk about anything else that I've seen him in. But um, Sa Sasha, Devar um, um, Sasha Dewan, who plays da Davos... I think he is equally as awkward as a martial artist, and I don't really buy him as a martial artist. And in a way, that was smart, because his awkwardness at martial arts matched with Finn Jones' awkwardness with martial arts, and it, in a way, it made the fights make more sense in a way. Like, it's, it's really hard to talk about, because... You know, it's, it's kind of like when you watch an old Bruce Lee movie and you get frustrated anytime somebody actually hits Bruce Lee because you can tell that the person that he's fighting is nowhere near as good as him, but somehow they're almost defeating him, which is why when you get to some of the classics like Enter the Dragon, there's always a trick to how they're getting close to defeating him because he's Bruce Lee and he's better than everyone at this martial arts thing. And so it was kind of smart to have two actors who, and I, I, like I said, I'm not going to talk about whether or not he's good in anything else as a martial artist. I don't think that that matters. I think it was a very interesting choice to make them both kind of bad at it, especially when they have someone like Colleen Wynn, who's very good at it. Um, yeah, so uh, that, that it was just awkward. 
There was one moment in the series where I actually shouted and checked back in, because I was kind of checked out through most of it. It is not a great series by any stretch, but it, it's fascinating on many meta levels. And I think towards the end, the end gets really interesting. And there's there are parts of it that I think are really good. I think the whole story, like like I said, with Ward and with Mary Walker, it, it's, to me, worth watching just for those. Colleen's storyline, I think, is worth watching just for it. it. It has some issues in other places. But there, were, there was one moment when I literally jumped out of my chair and screamed yes while pumping my fist in the air. And that was when Danny Rand turns to Colleen Wing and says, when we get capture Davos and pull the Iron Fist out of him, I want you to have it. And I got really excited because, yes, Colleen Wynn should be the Iron Fist. And they really, really set up hard why she should be the Iron Fist. And maybe that's setting up something for Season 3 as well. I don't know. We'll see when we get there. I think they can pretty much do whatever they want in Season 3 now, which is kind of the point of Season 2. It literally goes through and ties up all the loose ends. That season one and the Defenders left open, except for what happened to Daredevil, which we're not going to find out about until, of course, Daredevil. But um, it, 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 clo- it, it ties up so many loose ends and just kind of is a palate cleanser. And if you, it, it's a real introduction to how Colleen Wynn, Colleen Wing becomes the Iron Fist, because she does, you know, like I said, this is the spoiler part. She does become the Iron Fist at the end. Her Iron Fist glows white. There's a wonderful scene at the end where she puts the power of the Iron Fist into her katana. And I'm very excited to say that they do this before they reveal Danny Rand being able to do it. So it looks to be something that Colleen learned and maybe taught him or maybe they both learned separately. I don't know. I am very excited for what the show looks like with Colleen as the Iron Fist. I want to see season three. And that's the smart thing that they did here, at least for my book, for my money. They they tied up all of the storylines that were left dangling. They didn't... For anybody who wanted to see how those stories got resolved, they are literally all resolved now. They gave themselves several ac- options, so... Danny Rand can come back for season three if they want him to. He doesn't have to come back for season three unless they want him to. They, I, I am really curious to see where the series goes from here. And like I said, by the time it got to the end, I was enjoying the series. Because it is kind of this crescendo de crescendo that crosses over each other because it starts off very Danny Rand heavy and starts building Colleen up. And by the time you get to the end, it's Colleen's series and Danny is a character in it. And it was really interesting to see how they made that transition from one lead to the other throughout the story. I don't know if this was the wisest way to do it because I think a lot of people probably checked out on those early Danny Rand heavy episodes because they suffered from all the problems that you get with the Danny Rand heavy episode. But... In the end, it w- I think it was worth watching. It, w- it was better than season one. I think it was even better than um, as certain aspects of the defenders. I didn't dislike the, dis- the, the I did not dislike the the defenders in the way a lot of people did. I actually kind of enjoyed the defenders. I thought it had some problems, but all in all, it was a good series. Um, I know I'm kind of in a minority when it comes to that. I don't care. I kind of enjoyed it. This series. Like, the back half, I really liked. The front half is necessary for understanding why the back half happens. So I can't really just say, pick up at this episode and watch from there, and then you're going to see the good stuff. And it's one of those things, if you don't like Colleen, you're not going to like the series. If you don't like Mary Walker, you're not going to like the series. If you don't like um, Misty Knight, you're not going to like the series. I happen to like all three of those things. I think that the way that transition worked, worked for me. I'm excited to see where the show goes in the future. And that's something that I could not say about Iron Fist prior to this season. I know other people probably will disagree with me on that because the world we live in and that's how this works. Um, But for me, you know, it's not a perfect series. This didn't make it a perfect series. I think we'll have to wait to see what season three looks like. 
because if they Thor Ragnarok this, and I don't mean like make suddenly make it a comedy or anything, but completely change everything about the series because they've revamped the hero. I, I think they could really have something special here. I think Colleen as the white glowing sword wielding iron fist could really be an interesting show. So really successful if for no other reason it made me care about a show that I really didn't care about. And I really enjoyed large parts of it, especially Mary Wall. Really liked Mary Wall. And I'm sure that's the part. This is just how these things go. Anywho, so if any of that interested you, watch Iron Fist. This is not, I, I, as usual, eh, do what you do. I, I think it's a very interesting to see how they did everything, especially from the point of view of, of a writer. If you wanted to repair a series, how you might go about doing that. And as far as Disney goes, in Disney's been doing a lot of response movies. There, I think this is a, a better way to respond to criticism. Maybe not the best. I think Thor Ragnarok was the best way to respond to criticism of your work, but we'll see. So that's it for today's show. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I didn't mean for everything this week to be a review, but hey, that, that's how it worked out. If you have something you'd like me to, to, to talk about, you can hit me up on social media. I'm C.E. Dorson on Twitter. Um, that's the easiest place to find me. You can find links to all my social media accounts over at projectshadow.com. If you follow me on Anchor, you'll be able to send in little one-minute clips, audio clips, where you could comment on something I've said, comment on something you want me to talk about, ask a question, whatever. That'd be cool. Um, yeah, it's been a weird week. Okay, so let's just go through the basics real quick. If you can rate me in the app that you're listening to this in, please do so. It really does help the show out a lot. If you think anybody would that you know would enjoy the show, share that that helps out a lot too. Follow me on my social media stuff if you want to support the show and you can financially. You can click the link in the show notes or sometimes, depending on the app you're listening to, right on the app screen, it'll say support. If you click that, you can donate at the $1, $5, or $10 level. That really does help me out a lot to be able to continue doing the stuff that I do. If you want to support me over on Patreon, you can do that as well. Patreon.com slash CE Dorset. You can find links to everything that I do at projectshadow.com. Until next time, when who knows what we'll talk about, because the internet is weird, have the fun. Bye.